Hey, what's up you guys? Good to be back. More on that after this video, but for now, I'm gonna show you how to make Tijuana style carne asada tacos. You're gonna love them. Naranja, dulce, limón partido. Dame un abrazo, por Dios te pido. Si fueren falsos mis juramentos, y en algún tiempo te olvidaré. So, carne asada. Those are two very near and dear words for someone like me who was born and raised in a Mexican family who had carne asada every weekend. Now, carne asada also means, you know, your primos, your tios, your tias are all coming over and it's gonna be one long weekend of just good food and just having a good time. But for me, when I think of authentic carne asada, I think of Tijuana, which is pretty much carne asada city, all right? Everywhere you go, there's always carne asada. One place in particular that we loved going growing up and we, you know, we went again later in life. It's called the Tacos de Russo. Now, in Tacos de Russo, it's just hole in the wall, no frills place, where you just sit down, very fast paced service. These tacos are huge. There is one characteristic that makes Tijuana tacos unique is the fact that everything is cooked on mesquite coals or mesquite wood. That is, for me, the authentic ingredient, the authentic seasoning to cut an asada. You have to have the mesquite charcoal. Now today I'm gonna to show you my variation of those tacos inspired by the ones I had done in El Russo. And I guarantee you, they're gonna be your new fair way to have carne asada tacos. All right, so when it comes to the bait on what's the real authentic carne asada for me, it's not what it's marinated with or seasoned with. It's the kind of cut you're using. Now, carne asada is traditionally made with what you're looking at here, known as arrachera which is a thinly sliced piece of flank steak that's been pounded real thin. And there's also another cut known as the esmeal, which is the same process only with a chuck roast. And then another piece known as abuja, which is the esmeal, but it has the bone in the middle of it and it looks like a needle, which is what abuja means. Now, as far as seasonings go, this preparation is dead simple. Actually, if you want to get real authentic with it, you're just going to put salt and lime juice over it. And the reason why we, you know, keeping it real simple is because, like I said, mesquite is the true flavor of Baja style carne asada. All right, that fire is part of your seasoning and, you know, it's really crucial that you keep things light so you let that smokiness come through. But, you know, of course, I'm not just going to show you how to put salt on a piece of meat. So I'm just using a very basic seasoning and this consists of just salt, pepper, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of onion, and just a pinch of chipotle powder just for a slight smokiness, all right? You probably won't even detect it's in there. So simple enough, we're just going to season this up. And this is going to be kind of awkward, but I'm only going to season one side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to pile them up on this plate right here. And, you know, one side's going to be touching another side that's already been seasoned. And that's going to prevent us from over salting our meat. So now that the meat's prepared, ready to go, we're gonna focus on our salsas. Now for these tacos, I'm gonna do two kinds of salsas. I'm gonna make a roasted tomato, tomatillo chipotle salsa, and then I'm gonna make a pico de gallo. All right, so here's my ingredients for my salsa. Now here I got my two Roma tomatoes. I have two tomatillos, which I washed and peeled. I have a small onion here, which I quartered, and I got some garlic in their husk still, which we're gonna put on the cast iron skillet whole, you know, that allows them to roast, let them get, get soft and sweet so they don't become bitter in the salsa. And of course we have our cilantro. So here I have my cast iron, which I have with no oil. You know, it's important that you use a dry skillet here so you get a good char. I'm just gonna put them directly on there. Now, normally I would have my, you know, the, you know, the air filter going, but since I'm not using any chilies here, I don't have to worry about that. Regardless, you know, everyone in my house loves the smell of salsa being made. Cloves. And yeah, so we're just gonna let these char up a bit, turn them around a little. So you're not necessarily cooking the vegetables here, you're just getting them charred for that extra flavor. So everything's looking pretty good. Oh man, this is probably the best smell in the world right here where you're just roasting salsa. Oh. My tomatoes are starting to wilt a bit. It's kind of what I want. My onions are actually right where I want them. And it's good to put them in a bowl like this because these do start to, you know, drain some juices and you know those juices are one of the main flavoring points of your salsa. The idea is you don't want the juices to spread too much on your skillet. You want to, you know, you want to preserve those as much as you can in the bowl. 
All right, so here's everything good to go. And one important step is you want to cover this with plastic wrap. So you let everything just kind of wilt and sway. And like I said, pulls out all those juices. And yeah, so we're going to let them sit for about just maybe like a good 10 minutes to cool down. And then we're going to put them in a blender and finish our salsa. All right, so let's uh, put our salsa here in the blender. So here I got my uh, vegetables I roasted. Here I got my chipotles and adobo and a good heaping of that adobo sauce that you know comes in the can. Super amazing stuff. And then here I have my herbs, which is cilantro and a good pinch of Mexican dried oregano. And then of course, some seasoning. You kinda wanna be a little generous when it comes to salsas. All right, there's a lot going on. You do want that heat, or you do want that saltiness to you know penetrate everything that's in your salsa. So you know, start with a good pinch, puree, taste. You know, go as you will. And here is my secret ingredient when it comes to balancing the heat in the salsa. Now, I don't always need to grab this, but sometimes if I go a little too far with the heat or with the acidity, I just put a little, little like few drops, little teaspoons of this stuff. All right, agave nectar is very, very transparent in flavor. There's no flavor whatsoever, and it's pretty much like a little, it's like a little secret sweetener. You know, it doesn't give any flavor, like if you will, with like honey, and nor does it really sweeten things like you will with just straight sugar. So literally, like just like a little drop of that stuff helps balance any, you know, heat, any, you know, over saltiness, any. You know, just if something comes off too bitter, you know, that's what you want to be using. Just a little drops at a time, of course, taste, taste, taste. So, all right, so I'm going to blend this up. You know, it's kind of loud. I don't want to get that on camera. So I'll see you when it's all good to go. And here it is, puree. This is the consistency you want. Oh, oh my gosh, this smells amazing. You have no idea. Pour it all in there. So now that our salsa is good to go, we're going to chill it. We're going to get started on the pico de gallo. All right, so let's get started on the simplest of salsas, and that is the infamous pico de gallo. Now, pico de gallo is a tomato-based salsa, and you know typically it's actually used as a garnish rather than a salsa alone. So I'm gonna add some tomatoes. These are bright and seasoned too, really sweet. These are just Roma plum tomatoes. So here's my tomatoes. Now to that, I'm gonna add some onions. So let's talk about onions and in Mexican cooking. So you notice these are white onions. A lot of times you'll see, you know, recipes for pico de gallo or any salsa using red onions. You wanna be using white onions because white onions are actually the only onions that are next to green onions that are actually strong enough to hold up to, you know, you know, typical Mexican flavors. You know, Mexican cooking has a lot of bright, strong, assertive flavors. Chile serrano, not jalapeno. Serrano is the best green chili you can use, all right? I know it's a little spicier, it's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, a lot of people are kind of afraid to use it because it, it's, you know, it's spicier, but it's actually sharper in taste and has a much more pronounced green chili flavor. Now we're gonna add the cilantro here and i like to have my uh, my cilantro chopped very fine i'm a big fan of just seeing seeing it kind of like just little speckles of it just glisten on the tomatoes you know when it's the salsa is ready good old lime juice just a big squeeze season that you want this to be just slightly salty so i'm just gonna chill this and it's good to go and we're going to get started with the rest of our uh, fillings. Alright, so let's get started with a third filling here. And that's going to be the guacamole. Now guacamole is one of the things you you know commonly find in your tacos in Tijuana. So here I had two uh, avocados here that I just mashed ahead of time just to make it easier for me. I used the bean masher here. I was. I was. You would. I'm going to add my onions. And I already you know, spoke about using the white onions here. And I actually like my guacamole with a lot of onion flavor. Serrano and serrano and guacamole is a must. And then we're gonna add our cilantro. 
And then I'm gonna add some more of my minced tomatoes here. Boom. Now to that, I'm gonna add some spices. And that's cumin and chipotle powder. Now these two aren't really traditional, but I find uh, my guacamole naked without cumin these days. I need some limes. I'm using just one whole lime here. Some salt, be a little generous. Boom. Now I'm just gonna mix this up, give it a taste. Yeah, so this is good to go. I'm gonna put this in the fridge, let it chill, and then we're gonna get started on our last filling. All right, so this next filling is not a salsa and it's not a condiment. It's actually another piece of meat that we're gonna be putting in these tacos. We're gonna be using longanisa. Longanisa is essentially just chorizo with a little bit more spice and it's not as fatty. It's a little bit more leaner. It's very typical Tijuana fashion to have more than one type of protein in your taco. You know, you go to Tijuana, you can get smoked marlin, octopus, bacon, all in one taco, just wrapped up and they're just packed. And you know, when I went down there with my dad recently, I actually had a carne asada that was made from New York steak and they put beans, they put carne asada, and then they put chorizo, and then the cheese, and it's just a big meal in one little tiny little tortilla. It's fantastic. All right, so I got my pan right here preheated, a little bit of oil in there. Now we're gonna have the longanisa, remove the casings. Oh. Gonna break it up. And like I said, it's really just chorizo, but it's not as, uh, it's not as fatty. So you don't get as much as that, you know, the oil, which is amazing in chorizo. But since, you know, we're throwing this into a taco, it's just right. So like chorizo, you want this to get really well browned. And of course, you can definitely use chorizo for this. That's looking beautiful. All right, so this is what you should be left with right here. And you see all this brown bits right here? That is flavor. So I like to add back to that. So I'm gonna deglaze it with some water. And that also helps clean up your pan a bit. And I'm gonna pour this back into my longanisa. Beautiful. And there she sits, mi amigos. That is carbón de mesquite from Sonora. Now, Sonora is actually, it's, you know, said that's where carne asada originated. That is Mexico's beef country. And this is where, you know, most of the charcoal is produced. So I'm gonna light this baby up and we'll go from there. So if you happen to have a gas grill and you wanna replicate these flavors, you can easily just get some mesquite wood chips or any hardwood chips, soak them in water, put them in a little foil packet, poke some holes in with the fork and put it directly on the grill grates. Now that's gonna let the wood get hot and it's gonna produce smoke and it's gonna give your food that wonderful wood fire flavor. All right, so now we have our carne on the grill and this happens real fast. You know, arrache is real thin and you know, it's only gonna take about maybe like two, three minutes per side and my grill's pretty hot right now. So this is gonna happen real quick, good flip. Yeah, buddy, that's what we're looking for. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Oh yeah. But yeah, these guys are looking amazing right now. It smells amazing, All right? This is, you know, kind of any food cooking out on the grill will tease your neighbors, but some about carne and asada, and of course the use of, you know, mesquite or wood, it's alluring. All right, so they're looking ready to come off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move them to the cooler side, keep them warm, and I'm gonna get myself a container to put them in, and we're gonna be ready to build our tacos. All right, so let's get starting with the chopping. And there is no perfect way of doing this, especially if you're going Tijuana style. Stack them up, one with two, and just start hacking it. Now, 
And the Russo, what was pretty hilarious is there's this dude with this just large ass, just humongous machete just going at it, just toot, 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 toot. and man, it's always entertaining to watch. And he just pulls the meat right off the grill. He doesn't rest it like I do. All right, you guys, so this is what makes the Tijuana style tacos unique, is you're building them in a quesadilla, essentially. So here I got my griddle well preheated, and I got myself a blend of queso Oaxaca and crumbles of queso fresco. Now, queso fresco isn't a cheese you typically use to melt, but I love how it stays kinda, it actually still holds its texture, even when melted, and it just gets gooey, and you know, it's just, that's just my touch. But traditionally, down in Tijuana, they'd be using queso Oaxaca or, believe it or not, mozzarella, all right? There's a lot of Costco's down there, and, you know, you, you'd be surprised that, you know, a lot of taqueros use mozzarella. So, put my tortillas down. Turn over the one right there. If we really, really wanted to go the extra mile, we would be making our own tortillas. But since, you know, we're trying to make things a little bit more convenient, I'm using a good quality store-bought tortillas. Now these are actually made in-house at the market I get them at. So they're pretty all right, but I of course prefer homemade. Give them a turn, beautiful. And then quickly, we add our cheese. And you'll be tempted to be really generous with it, but you don't want to overdo it here. And we're just gonna let that melt a bit. And once it gets nice and gooey, we're gonna pull this off. So, funny story. So I'm over here making, you know, the, the quesadilla part, like normally on, a, on my comal, and suddenly, you know, smoke alarm went off. So yeah, so due to some <laughs> unforeseen events, we are gonna try this uh, new way. Here I got my smaller comal here. I'm just gonna warm up my tortilla, and I'm just gonna let them heat up, and then I'm gonna transfer them here to the baking sheet where I'm gonna put the cheese. We're just gonna real quickly put these under the broiler. And hopefully that doesn't set off the smoke alarm again. All right, so our cheese should be melted. Yep. All right, so to build our Tijuana style taco, we're gonna start by actually, awkwardly enough, we're gonna put our guacamole first because we want this to kind of have a base for the meat. And then we're gonna come in with our carne asada. Come in with our longanisa. There we go. We want it to be nice and messy like that. We're gonna add our lovely chipotle tomato tomatillo salsa. And then we're gonna put our pico de gallo. Told you, man, these tacos are huge. Queso fresco. And aquí está tu pinche taco de Tijuana. Vamos, let's eat this thing. So the moment we've been waiting for. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. All right, so thanks you guys for watching. I know it's been a minute. We're gonna keep continuing with these videos as much as we can. But for now, just hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. You know, tell me what you think on the comments. You should definitely give this recipe a try. So thanks again. See you next time.